Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to add a sectionless component to your React Native application. This is useful if you've got like different categories of um, data so that you can sort of show headers and footers and summarize things. It could be useful for like if you've got like budgeting data, but I'm going to just show you like a basic to do, like overdue, to do and completed. So first of all, I'm just using a safe area view because what I'm going to use will go over the space of the screen. It's not so necessary for this particular IELTS app, um, simulator as it doesn't have the, um, it doesn't go all the way to the edges, but is for the other um, more recent um, IELTS devices. So I'm going to import this section list from React Native. And I'm also going to import React from React, and that's because I'm going to be using the use effect hook and also use state. Um, so the state is going to be useful for my data, so I can load new data on refresh, and my um, use effect hook will be useful for actually loading that data right at the beginning. So I'm just going to want my data to be not set initially and I'm going to use effects to load my data. I've not actually got any APIs here so I'm just going to use a timeout to sort of mimic what it would be like if I called an API. So yeah, that's why I'll be using set timeout with a um, timeout of two seconds. So I'll call my load data function. Now I'm going to define my load data function. So this is basically what I'm going to use whenever someone refreshes or um, whenever the component is loaded for the first time. So inside load data, I'm going to um, want to specify what data, but like I said, I'm not loading from an API, so I'm going to manually specify that. So the format of the data is... Um, you're going to want an array of all the different sections and each section you can put whatever you want in. Um, so you might put a title, you might put a specific style you want to apply to that section if you want them to look a bit different. Um, and once my data, once I've got my loaded data, I'm going to set data so that it, um, <clears throat> so that it shows on the screen. Sorry for adding the set refreshing here. That's just because I um, have done a run through previously and I'll be using the refresh control later. And yeah, so a bit of a mistake here by me, but that's okay. So yeah, you're going to want an array of your different sections. I'm going to give mine a title. I'm going to give them a color as well. And then you're going to want the data, which is all the different... Um, items that you want to render in your se section. So those can be objects as well. Um, I'm choosing just to use some strings to represent the different to-do items, but I could have whether they're checked, what date they um, are for anything that I want to include. I can include if I had them as an object and then I could just um, access the object properties when I'm rendering them. But yeah, like I said, I'm just going to keep it simple and just have uh, array of strings which are my different to-do items. I pre-prepared my loaded data um, and I'm just going to copy and paste that in purely because it'd be a bit boring for me to type it all out. I just want to explain what these different sections are that I have. So yeah that's why I've shown you that. So now I'm just going to copy and paste in. So you can see now I've got completed, to-do and overdue. They're going to show up in the order that you put them. So I want overdue to show up first because I want to prompt action, for example, to do next and complete it can go last just because it's nice to see what you've done, but it's not really something you need to work on. So then I'm going to want to render my section list. So I'll just use that section list component and I'm going to want to supply it the data, which is um, through the property sections.
and I'll give that a style of stretch that's just so that it will take I'm going to go define that now but it's bas I'm basically wanting it to take up the entire screen like width and that's just going to be useful later on when I do styling um because I'm going to do some dividers between the different elements and I don't want them um I don't want them not taking up the whole screen basically Then you've got your key extractor that's kind of just like, um, you know, how when you do a map, you need to um, give the um, key for each um, item. So that's basically what this is. And then I'm going to want to create two functions I'm going to want one for rendering my item and one for rendering my header and then I'll come back and do my um, footer and my dividers later on so now I need to go ahead and create those functions for rendering an item and rendering a section header I'll just leave them blank for now. So I'm also going to um I'm so I'm gonna to want to return what my rendered item's gonna look like. So this render item's gonna take in an item and this one's gonna take in the section, which will have the section title, colour and any um data contained in that section so I'm just going to for the individual items just render it as a text and for the um, section headers I'm also going to render that as text but I'm going to apply some styling so I'm going to use that color to provide a color that varies from um, section to section so it sort of indicates the action so red obviously needs to be looked at um, black's kind of like neutral and green is like that's done so I'm, I'm using an array of styles and then I'm going to provide my color in the last um, style so I'm just going to go section.color and then I'm going to display my section title so now I've got that style defined um, I'm going to actually need to define the style in the style sheet, so I'm going to want to set up that section header style. I'm going to want to differentiate this reasonably well from the main um, item text, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, so if you saw that, um, so this set refreshing is what I mentioned earlier, I shouldn't have added in set refreshing, um, that was just a mistake on my part. I will come to that a bit later. So if I delete that and reload, then um, we should be okay. Okay, it doesn't seem to be reloading very well. I'll just manually reload it. I don't have it referenced anywhere else, so that should be okay. Cool, you can see my different... Um, headers you can see they're in different colors um, but they're not still not super obvious so I want to make them a bit more obvious so I'm going to do a text transform to make them all uppercase I'm going to give them an underline make their font a bit bigger add a little um, bit of vertical um, padding around them I'm going to give them a white background as well because um, for iOS, you're going to, when, it's, when you scroll through the list, if it goes off the screen, it's going to um, sort of stay there. It's called sticky headers or something like that. And you can choose to turn that off if you want, but it's typical of the iOS platform native behavior. So you probably want to keep it, but yeah. And you can also turn it on for Android if you want, but it's off by default for Android. So it's just to give it a bit more of a native feel. 
So yeah, now you can sort of clearly differentiate the different headers. They don't look super pretty, but you get the idea. So now I'm going to want to um, create my function to render a section footer. And that's because I'm going to just show down the bottom um, how many items in each section. So if, if this was a financial application, for example, I could actually just like do totaling down the bottom. Um, like I could have assets and um, stuff like that. And then totals. But I don't have that, so this is just my to-do total. So I'll say how many items have got overdue, how many items to do, and how many items completed. So it just keeps you aware of um, what's going on. And also shows you guys how to actually render a footer component. So I'll use the section data's length to... Um, get how many items there are and then I'll say what section it is for just to make it super clear. Kind of starts off and ends each section nicely and I'm going to create a separate style for that. This one I don't want to be as obvious but I still want it to stand out a little bit. I'm going to keep the font size the same but I'm going to make it italic and I'm going to add some padding as well just so it doesn't look like a normal item in the list. So I'll do a font style italic. And then add my vertical padding. Then I'm going to need to go and set that, um, that section footer against the actual section list so that it knows what to render. You can also um, render um, different components when the list is empty. So you can do that if you wanted, but I haven't shown that in this particular video. If you want to see that, let me know. So you can see I can scroll and um, overdue sort of hangs over the top of the items if you're scrolling up and they haven't gone off the screen. So whichever section you're at will hang there. Um, so it's kind of cool. That's a iOS behavior. In Android, it won't do that. Um, and you can also see my footer items down the bottom. Now I'm just going to show you how to render separators. So that's just the different dividers. The section separator divides the items from the header and footer. And the um, item separator divides each individual item. So I'm going to just show you that. And I'll represent them with different colors. So I'm going to create two styles. Uh, item separator and a section separator, but they're going to be pretty similar, just different colors basically. Just giving my viewer height of four so that you can see it, I'm giving it a color, a background color, sorry. So my item separator, I want to be a bit lighter, so I'm just going to set it to a nice light gray. And I'm going to use a line self um, to be stretch, and that's just so that it takes up the entire width of the um, section list. For the section separator, I want it pretty much the same, but I'm just going to change that color there. I want a nice darker gray. So then you're going to want to actually define your components. You can have you could have imported them if you had defined them separately, but for the simple simplicity of a tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to do it in line. Um, but yeah, it'd probably be better separated out in case you want to use it in other screens. So I'm just creating a simple view with the styles that I've defined. So styles dot section separator for the section separator. And then I'll basically do the same thing um, for the item separator. Just copy that and change the name 
of the component and also the style. Cool, I have to find those there, so if I hit save, then it should show. Yeah, you can see some nice light lines in between the different items and a darker line between the header and the footer in the items. So it's just a nice way to get a bit more um, clarity between the sections and the um, headers and footers and individual items. So now I'm going to want to show you if you pull down you can actually make it refresh the data just like you might expect in a normal list. So you're wanting to define something that will get called when you pull down which I've defined as a refresh data function and you're also going to want a variable to hold the state of whether it's currently refreshing or not. So I'm going to use mine, I'm going to use um, react state here and I'm calling my variable refreshing and I'll set that using the set refreshing function and I want it off by default and I'll just turn it on when I'm actually refreshing. So now I'm just going to define my function for refreshing so I'll just call it refresh data to match what I've um, set against on refresh. And um, like I said earlier, I don't have an API, but I'm just going to mimic that by calling set timeout. And then my um, function, I'm also going to set refreshing before I do that so that it shows that it's refreshing. Um, it gives good user feedback um, so that the user knows that something's happening. So yeah, after two seconds, it will call load data, which will basically... Um, set the data and I'm also going to want to set refreshing to false so that it no longer shows that refreshing element. Cool, now that I've done that, if I pull down, you can see that refreshing element up the top and then it sort of fades away after a few seconds and the data has been loaded. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today and if you have, please like and subscribe for more content.